Okay, so Geekworm have sent me a load of cases to test for the Raspberry Pi 5. So first up, we have an acrylic case. This acrylic case is a nice budget option for a Raspberry Pi 5. Uh, it's nice that they've added a power switch. So there's a little opening here and in this little bag, there is a switch. So you can basically switch your Pi on and off uh, without having to poke something in, which is nice. Uh, and it also supports the official active cooler. The first up is this passive armor case. Uh, and you can see that there are some raised parts for the key components. So this is the one that goes onto the RP1 chip. This is the one that goes onto the RAM. This is the one that goes onto the CPU and GPU, which they've said in their tests gets much hotter than anything else. And this little one uh, goes onto the power module. So all of that goes on like that. And it obviously sandwiches together with this base, which has these fins on as well, all for extra cooling. Uh, it comes with a load of thermal pads, although they do say for the CPU and GPU, you're better off to use thermal paste because it's more effective. And also this copper lid that comes on it as well. So we, this is contoured to fit the CPU, GPU on the Pi. And uh, so you pop that on with thermal paste in between and then pop this over the top. So I'll be testing that and see how well that goes. So let's just put it together. So you can see this a bit closer, nice and flat on one end and then contoured on the other. So if I sit that directly on it, it makes a nice solid connection. But let's put some paste in between. Now I could use the supplied, uh, which is said to be just as effective, but they've also sent me a syringe, which is just gonna be easier. Let's pop a bit of that on, probably more than I wanted and uh, pop that on there. Yeah, that feels nice. And then pop this on as well. Should be enough as it's quite a small CPU. So for the other components, I'll need to put these little sticky pads on. Still got quite a few pads left over, but I'm hoping I can reuse these for all these tests because they're. I'm pretty sure they're gonna touch all the same components. There we go, so that's all on. Let's sandwich this on the top and lines up with all the holes and then the base. And we obviously screw from underneath as there's nothing on the top. There we go. And that feels really solid, really industrial. Uh, nice access to the power switch and also the SD card slot and all the other connections are all protruding. So there's gonna be no worries there. And obviously this is all open. And if we want to, we can pop these GPIO pins on the top. We've got, not sure where we got two, uh, whether it's just to make it even more raised uh, from the case. I'm not gonna worry about those though. So let's plug it all in. And they've sent me a link to a stress test. So let's have a look at that. So if I go to the browser, this is the link they sent me. So geekworm.com CPU, Pi CPU stress. It's actually Jeff Gilling's test. Uh, and the original GitHub is here, uh, if you want to have a look at that as well. Uh, and the changes they've made is uh, they've added, I think it was minutes and seconds, and they've also made it 20 minutes instead of 10 minutes. So that's, that's the changes. Uh, so let's copy this and open a terminal. So Control-Alt-T, and let's paste this in and grab the next part. back to terminal and paste it in. I should be using window snapping for this. It always works a lot nicer. And let's drag that over there. Uh, so the next part here, copy that and paste that in. And the last bit to run it and go. Oh, and there's one more bit I need to do. sudo at install stress ng and yes now we can put the last command in there you go so now it's running uh, let's just start p sensor so we've got a log of what temperatures and also fan activity so let's maybe just put this as the main thing and then pop p sensor on there you can see it's waiting for a stable temperature at the moment. So I'm gonna go off and have lunch and come back when that's all done.
Okay, so now that's finished, uh, let's see how hot it got. So maximum temperature was 62 degrees, uh, which is pretty impressive with no active cooling at all. CPU usage was 100%, obviously, uh, for a lot of the time it goes to 100% in this test. If we minimize this and have a look at the folders. So the test is here. And it shows when it started and finished. So the whole process was about 30 minutes. And you can see here that it was maxed out all of this time. And where does it show? So maximum temperature was around about here. So 60.9. And if we go back to P sensor, yeah, so 61, 62. I'm not sure if this gets overwritten. So I think what I'm going to do is put them in a new folder. Just call it temperature tests and drag it into there. Just check this in there, yeah. Uh, so now I think I'll build the next case, but that was very impressive. So many of the same bits, as you can see, all the same bolts and everything, and uh, the same copper plate, but this is an enclosed case. And as you can see, the these are raised much more, so there's a lot more space inside the device. So I'm hopeful that this will be even better, even though it's an enclosed case, because there's so much more aluminium. And this is the base, and again, it's closed. I wonder what they've done about the button. So if it's on like that. Oh, okay, we must have a button. Yeah, it looks like this is a button in here. Although we have a different layout here. So the power is the same, the CPU, the RAM, and the RP1. But we've also got this one as well. Oh, no, we did have that bit. I completely missed that bit out. So <laughs> I didn't put anything on that. Uh, so I will on this one. And this is the Ethernet transceiver. And I was using Ethernet. So yeah, let's put something on there. I've put a bit more thermal paste in the middle. So SD card slot is this end. Oh, and it's got these little lugs that it sits on as well. Uh, so here and here. So it seats itself on its own. And let's pop that on top. So the GPIO pins are accessible through here. So obviously if you're plugging in and unplugging, it's not as ideal for that. There we go, four screws in. There's no rubber feet on this. Um, now it's not a scratchy surface or anything, but I would definitely like it more if it had rubber feet uh, on the base of it. So let's plug it in. So the button is uh, nice and big and translucent and uh, it uses the micro switch that's already on the Pi. So it's got quite a nice feel to it but I like the fact that it's a bigger button. Okay, let's run speed test number two, just start P-Sensor. And actually we'll start H-Top as well. Just so we've got some good monitoring. And the terminal. Let's snap that over here. Right, let's use that same command. And we have to navigate to the folder and then use that command so what are we at the moment we're 27 degrees maximum of 28 35 and 35 and obviously cpu usage is very low at the moment because it's trying to get its stable temperature so i'll leave it alone so it's definitely better if i show the temperature on the left hand side is the armor passive cooling case the P122-C, and the right-hand side is the test I've just done on the heavy-duty aluminium case, the P573. So we had 62 was the max temperature on the more open case, and we had only 54 on the heavy-duty case, and we also had 61 and 54. Um, so it definitely is better, definitely is more effective, and I guess that's because there's quite a lot more aluminium, plus it is taking that heat away, further away from the main components. So let's have a look and see if it got the results in there. Yeah, so you can see it's here. Uh, I guess I better label them so I know which one's which. So you'd be able to see them side by side. Uh, so the initial temperature 26.8 compared to 32.2. And then when it starts to ramp up, so we're at 420, it was at 
40.6, 420 was 44.4. Let's go with uh, 780, 53.8. And 780, 46.6. So yeah, it just it just is consistently cooler all the way through the tests, and obviously at the end of it, it cooled down better as well. So I've got two more armor cases to test, and these have got fans. One's got one fan, one's got two fans. But I think I'll show them in a part two. Um, so I think I'll save this video because I'm running out of time today, and uh, yeah, run the tests on those. But I can also compare it to these results. Okay, so I hope this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.